in, in this video number three I'm going to show you how to set up port zero uh, to generate um, a specific delay without using the prescaler and uh, yeah we will then see we're also going to calculate a certain what the frequency will be and so forth so if I go to my slide here my next slide um, first of all we must just realize that when you make use of an AVR the one pulse from your crystal oscillator will basically generate one up count on your timer register uh, depending on the microcontroller that you use uh, that is different if you make use of a pick you use four pulses from your crystal uh, but in this case it's directly one on one if you make use of an 8051 12 pulses from your crystal will generate one machine cycle and that will only count up one in your timer but yeah it's one on one which means uh, if you've got a frequency of one megahertz that means every one microsecond your timer will count up by one if you make use of a 10 megahertz it is 10 times faster which means every 0 0,1 microsecond your timer will count up if you make use of an 8 megahertz it's every 0 0,125 microseconds in my case with the reason why I've highlighted this in blue is I make use of a 16 megahertz crystal because I make use of the Arduino hardware I'm making use of software which is Atmel Studio or Microchip Studio but in the hardware I make use of the Arduino um, so this is why I say in my case I make use of 16 megahertz crystal and if you make use of a 16 megahertz crystal then that means that your delay will be 62.5 nanoseconds that's how long it will take to uh, count up after each and every count uh, 62.5 nanoseconds would have passed so that is the time delay that I'm going to work with uh, further in this specific example so if I look how to calculate the delay generated by the timer so we have to calculate what is your machine cycle a machine cycle from your crystal is, is t divided uh, sorry t equals 1 divided by your frequency and as I've said, if the frequency is uh, 16 megahertz, we've already seen that uh, that boils down to a 62.5 nanoseconds uh, time. Your machine cycle time will thus be 62.5 nanoseconds. And then if I want to know, uh, well, if I know how, what the number of machine cycles is, and I know what my machine cycle time is, I can calculate the delay. Uh, saying it in a different way if I know what my delay is I, or the delay that I want and I know what my machine cycle uh, time frame is I can calculate the number of machine cycles needed to get that time so in this specific example I know what my machine cycles are there are 14 of them I know what the time of each and every one is and that gives me a total time of 875 nanoseconds uh, which is the delay which I will get like I say if you if you don't know uh, if you do don't know what delay you want then you'll have to calculate the number of machine cycle uh, the cycles that is needed so in this specific case what I've done here is because I I know if I can just go back to that slide I know 14 machine cycles gives an 875 nanoseconds delay so what I've done is I've written a program and I've said let's do the following I want to generate an on time of 875 nanoseconds and also an off time of 875 nanoseconds so that's my it's my request in this specific program so what I've done here in this first line I have just set up DDR B to be hex 20 which means I made pin number 5 a 1 uh, on port B which is setting it up for an output and as I've said the reason why I'm doing that is I make use of the Arduino and on the Arduino there's an LED connected to port B pin number 5 so this register TCNT that's basically your counter uh, timer counter register uh, I've loaded that with hex F2 which means there will be 14 counts before rollover occurs uh, and it, the total time it will take will be 875 nanoseconds so by loading into the control register a value of 00, zero I'm saying to this thing I want 
you to be in normal operation. And this all is done before the while one loop. So this is just part of your setup. At this stage, the timer is not running yet. But as soon as I go into my while one loop here, uh, I'm saying, listen here, load one into uh, the counter register B. And if you do that, it will start the timer and no prescaler is used. In other words, one pulse from your micro, uh, sorry, your crystal will deliver one increment on your timer. So in this specific, with this statement here, I'm just testing the TOV zero flag. So if the count is starting at F2 and it goes to F3 or F4 or whatever, during that period until it reaches FF, and only when it rolls over will TOV uh, become a one. Before that, it will be a zero. And this statement here is testing that value of TOV. TOV is actually being defined in uh, in this header file, in the IO header file, as being TOV is bit number zero in this specific register here. And if you do the testing, like I've, I'm doing it here, as long as TOV is a zero, uh, it will actually result in a zero here, which means I will sit here for uh, waiting as long as TOV is a zero, to a TOV zero, of course, is a zero, I will sit and wait here. As soon as there's a rollover inside this interrupt flag, bit number zero, which is the TOV bit, will change to a one. And that means this is not true anymore. It's not equal to zero anymore. It will become uh, false, the statement, and it will then jump to this line here which if I load 0, 0 into the control register B, it will actually stop the timer. So this is uh, this by loading 0, 1, I start the timer by loading 0, 0, I stop the timer. And then uh, if you want to reset the flag, um, you have to load a 1 into the TOV 0 flag. Only by, by, by loading a 1 into the TOV flag, you will reset the, the bit to become a zero. It's strange, but that's the way it works. So this statement here is basically ensuring that a one is loaded into TOV position number, bit number zero of the interrupt flag. And then in this statement here, I'm just reloading uh, hex F2, just the start point to reload it again. Otherwise, if it rolls over, it will normally go back to zero, zero, and that's not what we want. We want only 14, uh, 14 counts, uh, a delay. So, and this, this specific statement here, all it's doing, it is, um, it is actually toggling bit number five of the port B. So whatever the value is, uh, it will just toggle it. In other words, this, this sign here is exclusive ORing it, which means just toggle, uh, take the value, and if it was a zero, uh, you toggle it, it becomes a one. If it was a one, you toggle it, and it becomes a zero. So uh, for the on time, let's say the on time, it was on, you will see that it's on for 875 nanoseconds. And if I toggle it here, and it goes back to this section here where we start again, it will also be off for 875 nanoseconds. And if that happens, um, I've got a certain frequency being generated on pin 5 of port B. So the next question here is what is the frequency that's been generated? As I've said, my on time, 875, my off time, 875. So the total time is 1750 nanoseconds. Um, that's my period of the generated pulse on pin number 5 of port B, which means my frequency will be the inverse of 1750 nanoseconds, which is 571.4 kilohertz. And that is the end of uh, video number three. I'll go into a little bit more detail also on video number four. Thank you.